In this video, I'll show you how to create a DCP file in Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Learn how to create your own digital cinema package right now. Hi, this is Alex from Massive, the fastest and safest way to deliver all your large media files online. And yes, that includes DCPs. Sign up with Massive today and you'll get 100 gigabytes free to send all of these large files anywhere you want. I'll leave you the link in the description box below so you can check it out. Okay, let's talk about DCPs. A DCP or digital cinema package is what you need to send to film festivals and theaters so they can play your film on the big screen. A DCP is a super high-res delivery format that packages your film's audio, video, and metadata files together. These files are then used by cinema technicians to project your media. When you export a DCP, you will see a folder with some XML files and individual MXF files for audio and video. Every single frame of your film will be encoded with a JPEG 2000 codec wrapped in the MXF file file container either in 2K or 4K resolution. Let's see how to export a digital cinema package using editing software that you probably already have access to, Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. All right, I have this cut here we're going to use as an example. First of all, let's prepare the sequence. Keep in mind that you can export directly from the locked editing cut, or you can also use a high-res master file. You can either create a new sequence or modify the settings of your final cut sequence. Either way, just keep in mind that you might have to do some manual adjustments. We're going to do it now by changing the sequence settings of the lock cut. I'll make a copy of the final cut sequence I have here, and I'll add DCP at the end of it. Cool. Let's go to sequence, then sequence settings. In editing mode, we will change it to custom so we can adjust certain parameters. Remember to follow the specific requirements for the theater or film festival you're sending your film to. Some settings may vary. In time base, let's choose 24 frames per second. This is the most compatible worldwide, therefore the safest option. In frame size, we will choose either flat, 1998 by 1080, or scope, 2048 by 858. These are the theater screen sizes. If not specified, use the one that best suits you. Flat gives you the sidebars, while scope will give you the top bars. Let's use the flat format. Okay, leave aspect ratio as square pixel one and audio sample rate at 48,000 Hertz. Display format and preview settings, leave it like that as well. When you're done, click OK. Now let's go to File, Export, Media. In the drop-down menu of Format, select Raptor DCP. If you don't see Raptor in there, it might be because you have an Apple Silicon M1 computer. Close Premiere and go to Finder. Select Applications and find Adobe Premiere. Right-click on it and press Get Info. In the little window, check where it says Open using Rosetta. I have to say though, I have an Apple Silicon computer and every time I try to do my DCP exports, Premiere just froze or completely crashed. So better if you can use a computer with Intel processors. Trust me, it will save you a lot of time and frustrations. Okay, back to Premiere in the export tab. Down here we can see the video codec is JPEG 2000 and you can choose the video dimensions. Choose the one you select for your timeline, either flat 1998 by 1080 or scope 2048 by 858. Frame rate, let's leave it at 24 FPS. And the rest of these parameters are set for the export already. Look that the bit rate is 250, so get ready. It will be a heavy file. If you choose to not change the sequence settings and just export directly from your lock cut or high-res export, the automatic scaling option is here. Choose scale to fill so the image fills the screen but keep in mind that some parts will be cut off. Or you can choose the scale to fit to remain the same image size you had, but with letterboxing. Okay, in the audio tab, you can choose stereo or 5.1, and this depends on your audio. Better if you have the 5.1, as it will be best option for surround sounds in a theater. If not, just choose stereo. Then don't worry about the effects or captions, we don't need that. Click export, and there you go. Okay, now let's go through the process in DaVinci. The software works with the EasyDCP plugin. This one lets you not only export your DCP, but also encrypt it and produce key DMs. These are certificates that allow the recipient to play an encrypted DCP. Although, keep in mind you have to have the full version of DaVinci or the EasyDCP plugin to be able to make a workable DCP. If you only have the free version, you will get a watermark and other limitations. 
All right, I have here in my timeline a high-res master export with its embedded audio. Same cut I use in Premiere. I set up a 5.1 surround audio track in one channel already for simplicity. Go to the Delivery tab, and here at the top left, we're going to leave it in Custom. Open up the drop-down menu from Format, and we will select DCP. The codec stays the same, Kakadu JPEG 2000, and in Type, we will choose the resolution we want. We have the same aspect ratios as before. DaVinci also allows 4K exports if you need it, but you have to have the paid version for it. I'll choose the same one we use in Premiere, 2K DCI flat. Here we're going to check Use Interop Packaging, as it is the most compatible worldwide as well. Then we will go to Maximum Bitrate. The usual maximum bitrate accepted in festivals is 250, so keep it below that. Now let's check the audio settings. Down here is where we have to select the right output track. If you have available the 5.1, definitely use it. If not, just the stereo. Back to the video tab. Down below, open up the composition settings. In composition name, click the edit button. In here, you can add the right file name with specific info about your film. You don't have to use this, but it's better as is the standard DCP file naming conventions used in the industry. In this way, it's clear for the recipient what they're getting, and also just for your own personal organization. If you're interested about the best practices in file naming conventions, I leave you this video here we did about it, so you can check it out at your own time. Okay. The last step is just adding this to the render queue and exporting it. If you want to verify it, if the DCP file works correctly, you can do it through DaVinci Resolve as well. There you go! That's how you export DCP files through Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. By the end of these processes, you will have this heavy folder with all the files you need to send. If the festival or theater accepts IP-based DCP transfers, you should definitely use Massive to transfer your files. With Massive, you can transfer all your private and protected content safely in just minutes. Massive takes all the necessary steps to protect your files on the way to the recipients, providing encrypted file sharing, password protection, and access control, among other benefits. After you send it, Massive will notify you when the film festival or theater downloads your package, so you can rest assured they receive your film in good condition. Check out the link in the description for a special case study with Simple DCP, a DCP shop that uses Massive exclusively to send their digital cinema packages. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please help us with that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel for more filmmaking tutorials. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!